Hello, I thought I would make a quick video for radiologists discussing how to um, make comparisons on follow-up DEXA bone densitometry scans and determine whether interval change is significant or not. So uh, the first part of the video I thought, or the first video I would discuss how to statistically determine whether the change has been significant. And then for the sec uh, second video I thought I would talk about how you can uh, report that on that information onto your, in this case, PowerScribe 360 report template. So first of all, to make a valid comparison, it has to be on the same machine. Both scans have to be on the same machine. And in this case, uh, this is an example of a whole logic. GE looks a little bit different, but the, um, the, I, the principles are the same. And, and then which scan are you going to compare to? Well, it has to be the same machine to even you know, consider it. And if, uh, if you have the choice, always compare to the most recent comparison. Um, patients and clinicians are usually interested in what has happened since uh, the most recent scan. So don't go back to the baseline, just compare to the most recent old comparison scan. So um, there's two areas that you use for comparison. Uh, one is the lumbar spine and the other is the total hip. So in this case, we'll look at the lumbar spine. So here's the result summary for the lumbar spine. And then uh, here's the results history where there's a comparison table. So first of all, if you're gonna make a comparison, you have to make sure that the same thing was measured. So the same hip or the same levels of the lumbar spine. I picked this case because it has a lot of degenerative sclerosis and um, it, I wanted to show the difference between a statistically significant change versus a clinically significant change. So in this case, you know, we're, we're just gonna discuss how to do the statistically significant change and then we'll, we'll show that, well, maybe it's not clinically significant because of all this sclerosis that has developed in the interval. So um, the first thing to compare, you have to make sure you measured the same levels in the same way. So in this particular case, they measured L1, L2, and L4. They left off some of the sclerosis at L3. Even so, I probably wouldn't believe the results. They seem quite sclerotic at the other levels. But in terms, in terms of how to calculate the statistically significant change, what you do is you um, you look at the total bone mineral density here. And then this table, the results history, gives you the total bone mineral density for the spine um, for, the, for the current exam and for the comparison exam. And then what you have to do is determine whether this change in bone mineral density is significant. So to do that, you look down here below the table, and this is a little hard to see, but below the table is this um, least significant change for the spine, and it's reported here at 0.030 in grams per centimeter squared. So for this unit, this is the statistically significant change. So the question is, is this interval change, is it, is it more than required for the statistically significant change? So unfortunately, they tell you the percent change over the interval, 4% decrease, or well, 3.9% decrease over the interval, but doesn't tell you the bone change in bone mineral density, so I have to do a little calculation. So we'll just grab the calculator, pull it down here. So the question is, this was the bone mineral density on the prior scan, and this is the bone mineral density of the spine now, and has that been a change? So let's uh, do the calculation. So 0.984 minus the current one of 0.945, 0.945. So just by subtracting those two, we see that the interval change in bone mineral density in grams per centimeter squared is 0.39. And the least required change for statistical significance is 0.30. So 0.30 and the current one is 0.39, so the actual change has exceeded that required for significance. So it is a, significant, a statistically significant change. So over these, you know, eight, uh, seven years, the uh, bone mineral density in the lumbar spine measurement, measurement has dropped by 3.9%, um, and it is statistically significant. Um, it seems to me like more likely what's happened is while the bone mineral density was dropping a little bit, a lot of the bone mineral density was being artifactually elevated by degenerative sclerosis being deposited. But um, that is a clinical judgment based on the picture. So... Uh, the statistical um, analysis shows that there has been a, a statistically significant change. So then you look at the hip. So let's um, let's pull up the hip and 
look at that. Okay, now if the spine is all hunky-dory and you believe it, you can just report the spine and base your decision clinically off that. But in this case, we certainly have to look at the hip, and it's good to look at both values and make a judgment. So this is um, the scan for the hip with the comparison, same comparison. So notice that we're going to use the total, the total hip value here for the comparison. So that's kind of bolded, and then in the results history, that's bolded. And this is pretty hard to read, but I think we can make it out. So um, this shows the bone mineral density column, and it shows that over the, the interval from 2008 to 2015, there has been a bone mineral change of minus 10.8%. So there's been an 11% decrease in bone mineral density in the total hip. But let's see if that is a statistically significant change. So what you do is, under the results history table, you look for the least significant change required for the uh, hip. And in this case, it's 0 0.041 grams per centimeter squared. So we have to do subtraction again for the bone mineral density in the comparison versus the prior and see if the change exceeds that minimum required change for statistical significance. So this was the pre previous bone mineral density value for the total hip. 0.731, and this is the current one, so we'll say, subtract them. So minus 0 0.652, 0 0.652. So by subtracting those, we can see that the actual bone mineral density, it's been a decrease, went from a bigger number to a little number, that's why the percent shows a decrease, and the actual drop was 0 0.79. And is that big enough to matter? So it has to be bigger than 0. 0.041, so 0.041, and it is 0 0.079, so it has exceeded the minimum requirement, so it is definitely statistically significant change. So um, you report that out over here in our template, we would say interval change in total bone mineral density is, and I will put in there 0 0.079. And then later we can also, in the impression report, I would use the, in this case, I would use the hip as the reliable measurement. I would discard and I would not use the lumbar spine measurement. I would just put up on here, I'd delete all that and say lumbar spine is not reported due to technical limitations from degenerative sclerosis. And my impression would be that there has been a significant, statistically significant decrease in the bone mineral density um, of, you know, with a decrease of uh, approximately 11% uh, compared to 2008. And then I would make a note that I used the hip for measurements because of the degenerative sclerosis in the lumbar spine. Now you never use the wrist for measuring um, interval change. And another thing is that uh, the whole logic always uses total hip and spine, but the GE uh, lunar, at least when we have, uses femoral neck instead of total hip for the comparisons. And uh, Everything else is very similar. All right, so that's how you report, that's how you determine and report the statistically significant change. And you try to use the lumbar spine, it tends to be the most reliable, so you default to using that and reporting that.